Also, I love Nicolas Cage movies. I always enjoy his performance. And today I'm watching the 2021 Prisoners of the Ghostland. This has been highly recommended, so I'm very curious to watch it, and especially considering it's one of his newer films as well. I don't know the plot. I don't know any other cast members. I don't know the director. If you have any other suggestions for Nicolas Cage movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. I'm guessing this is more of like a, an independent film. There's lots of production companies that are coming up in the start. And usually that's the case when you're trying to get funding, you get more people involved. So yeah, I think that's like the fifth or sixth production company intro. And here's another one. I love indie films, so I'm very excited to watch this. It's kind of reminding me of... Um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas so far just with that style of font and uh, this like very soft music playing so far Give me the money! Stay there! Give me the money! Come on! Hurry up! Stay there! Yeah, it's interesting to have all the characters in such bright colors Oh, I was that kid wearing a mask? You feel so much better than that Okay, they're escaping from something? She's like, oh, we're finally free. Yeah, and they gave her like a bracelet of hope. Oh my. I'm not a prisoner! Prisoners of the Ghostland? Oh my, okay. Is Nick Cage a prisoner? Do they put Cage in a cage again? Oh, they gotta stop doing that. Quite the uh, welcoming committee. Oh my. No, 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 no. Oh, that's visually such a cool shot. You, sir, I am told, are the man to do the job. Okay, they want him to track down this guy's granddaughter and only wearing leather while he's at it. Oh my. Is this a musical? This is like the second song. And they just have a live sketch artist. I warn you, sir, to quarrel with me is a mistake many men have made never to make again. They're like, we can't afford, you know, our own music, so we'll just have the actors sing songs during the scenes. Qualities. Each arm is equipped with an explosive device. Well, that's inconvenient. Alarm will sound, and if unheeded, detonation will occur. So if he thinks about hitting a woman, he's going to explode? So equipped with explosives, one at each testicule. Oh, my. He's like, you know what? I'll take this rickety old bike. I don't want your car. I want a strict timeline. Villainous maggot! What a badass. Is it though? Does he even know where he's going? Does he think the car is rigged as well? I mean, it probably is. If he's giving you a suit that's gonna explode your bits in five days, the car is probably also rigged. All right. He's like, you know what? Second thought, I will take the car. Not sure what that had to do with anything. Why I couldn't have just taken the car in the first place, but here we go. Is he gonna drive angry? Ah! Uh, is he gonna be gone in 60 seconds? Is he gonna be a ghost rider to Ghostland? Just all the other movies that involve him driving. Oh shoot, that's the sign we saw in the girl's dream. It's like Mad Max warrior, road warrior or something. I don't know what's going on here. That looks like in Deadpool before he gets his suit. That's who it's reminding me of. Oh God. You want to doubt, just drive straight into it. Yeah, 
Yeah, they said there was like a stretch of highway called Ghostland. Are those all supposed to be all the people he killed at the bank? Oh my gosh. Bring out your dead. I'm not dead yet. Yeah, it's like goth Mad Max. The sets have been very interesting. Like we had that when he was in town and then whatever this like wasteland, ghost land this is. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. I'm very curious to see where this is gonna go. Is this like hills have eyes situation where mannequins have come to life after this like nuclear testing town? There must have been so many extras like the other scene had tons of people this scene has tons of people. They're admiring this like library set. And this like forced labor clock of or clock forced labor camp of them trying to move this clock, keep time from moving. I don't think that's how it works. Oh god, they want to drink his blood? They think his blood will stop time? What? Is it because they're all dead and they're ghosts and like seeing blood will somehow bring them back to life or something? Yes, give him the karate chapes. I love it when people add swears in the middle of random sentences. Nobody. Just a guy looking for a girl. Is this gonna be a, a movie where we like never find out his name? No, no, stop! What are you doing? We got rocks for brains. Don't touch it! Oh my. Oh, that one seems real. Oh my. Oh, what? That's my masterpiece. They just glued parts of mannequin faces onto their regular face? What? But I protect them. I hide them! We are not the ones who hold her captive. Okay, then who is? You come here with me. Little Cookie, stay with us. She can't go out there! Little Cookie. Talk! She cannot! That power has been taken from her. What? She must reclaim it herself. Thank God this guy's here to explain what's happening. Guard Grandpa sent me to get you now. Time it up! Home. Better hurry up for Grandpa, or my suit's gonna explode. Take it off. Come on. Is Bernice not gonna talk for the whole movie? Take it off. I feel like it's a mix of Mandy meets Willy's Wonderland meets Mad Max. You get that roller skating? <laughs> Woo! I love it when he gets to go like off the rails. Take it, take it off. I still don't like. I don't know why they dressed them up as a mannequin. Is it to hide them from the take demon or something? Take it off. Oh my! Take it off. He does love to repeat his lines. Oh yeah! Oh, she got water on his suit. Oh! oh! Right in the bits. I don't know if he was planning on having kids, but uh, that dream might be short-lived. She just blew off his man parts. Shiro Aka. Is that Japanese for? I want to like this movie. It's just right now it feels weird for the sake of being weird. I just, it feels like it's trying to be very, like, all these different meanings and all these different pieces, and I don't know that it's really working.
Is this based on a book or anything like that? Comment below and let me know. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they're source material, if that explains things more. I'm not sure the significance of the masks, if it's something, if it's cultural or if it's just he wanted to add some mystery to the characters. Yeah, if it was partner who did all the killing, did they not get his partner as well? That's such a crazy shot. I wonder how many times they did it to get the effect they wanted or if they had one machine and they're like, we gotta make it work. Yeah, who were these two? Oh gosh. Oh! Oh gosh. Okay, so that little girl is now Bernice. Oh, what? Unless Cage has been in jail since she was a little girl, I'm guessing, because yeah, she was shot the day of the bank robbery, so. And I'm guessing that governor then adopted Bernice and he seems very creepy also. It's me. Yeah, he sent the guy who was involved in the bank robbery. Not the one who shot her, but the one who was still obviously involved to go rescue her. Oh, man. Well, that's terrifying. He's like, burn zombie people are trying to take her back. Uh-oh. Oh, what did he lose this time? His arm? Oh, man, this guy's not gonna make it back. So, I mean, he can't- oh, he did push Bernice. I was gonna say, can he not hit anybody, but... Yeah, right in the elbow. Oh, God. This guy was not messing around. This is how they're telling stories now. Okay, so a prison truck crashed into a nuclear plant that also had toxic waste in it and obviously turned all these prisoners into what we're seeing now, which explains kind of that like zombie, those burn victims that were charging them before. But that doesn't, yeah, that's, that kind of explains things. Get up! Get up! Okay, well, at least she talks. I thought we were gonna go a whole movie with the, the one question Cage was asking every 30 minutes. Uh, clock? Okay. Over there! Hey, Susie! Come on! Does this guy, like, run a brothel or something? Like... This seems very uncomfortable. Get the job done, Governor. I promise. I we bring me America. The country? Tick tock. That's good. That's good. Now the second hand. Tick tock. Tick tock. Why is he trying to turn her into a clock? Duck. Tick tock. Yeah, louder. Tick. It definitely feels like there's themes of time in this, and I don't know if it was trying to be more of like a sci-fi movie with them like stopping time. Louder. And I'm just shouting tick tock. See tuxedo mask is gonna leave his rose. Oh my. Have been Heathcliff's miseries. And I watched and felt each from the beginning. Is he reading them withering heights? Anything on that highway. <laughs> no one escapes the ghost land. You hear? No one! Is he like keeping them there for some reason? Like I I I'm not sure why they can't escape. Other than no one really seems to be trying to, except for Nick Cage. The people I harmed. He's just this unblinking, like wide eyed monologue. And radioactive. What? What did you see? 
they helped him because he's radioactive. What is this? Oh God, he loves to do that to people. Yeah, right through the lamp. Oh God. It feels like they just wanted to add a bunch of really disorientating images. With this piece, you will find me. Like, is this supposed to be like a drug fueled sequence? And why is this guy turning people into mannequins and like that wall of singing heads? She keeps waking up having the same nightmare. Did any of this actually happen? It definitely felt like someone had a bunch of random ideas and just put them all in one movie. They're like, I want a guy who's uh, in a rotating library set. I want a suit that will explode your downstairs. I want people dressed up as mannequins. I want a bank robbery. I want people trying to stop time. Impossible! <laughs> it's impossible. Impossible! Ha! Yes. He's like, I will lead you. Standing here with one arm and one testicle! <laughs> yes! I love it. You bitches! This is my favorite part so far. Jake, to fire all these cars up and get the hell out of here. That's supposed to be a play escape plan. It's just, just fix the cars and drive out of there and leave. Like, they could have done that how many times before they just needed somebody to tell them, you know, these cars, you could just get in them and leave at any time. And now there's a prophecy about blue butterflies that they've just added in. Like, I like weird movies. This just feels like it's messy. Like, it feels like they needed to strip away at least, like, seven ideas and just go with what they know and what they want. Like this just, it's just not working for me. With a long line of mist winding near to the top. I'm guessing this guy is the only one who knows how to read out of this group and also seems to be intelligent. So I'm not sure why he couldn't figure out a way to leave, but he also seems to be the one wanting to keep them there the most. Every time someone's like, let's leave. He's like, no, we can't like, not really concerned about escaping. Like visually, it's been a very interesting movie, but I just don't know the stories there to make it work. Robocop. Is he gonna give himself a uh, metal pieces? Oh. And like the very dark muted color palette of Ghostland compared to the very bright, you know, city with everybody wearing, you know, lots of reds and lots of really bright colors. Like it thinks the football helmet's gonna protect you from the guy who chops off heads. Is that his partner? What? Is that familiar to you? From the bank robbery? That's the only person I think you would recognize. What? Why is he like, I'm so happy to see you? Oh, he was on that prison truck. Oh, I see. I thought they shot and killed him, but I guess not. You were always so much fun when you had a couple of shots of whiskey in you. I feel like reminiscing about the good old days. Let me help. So now he's like a ghost whisperer or some kind of medium. Like what is he? What? He thinks these ghosts need his help? Yeah, his ghost land is like purgatory. Like he thinks if he can take out the governor, he'll free these ghosts from Ghostland. She does love this robot. For the sake of me, birds will fall from the sky. Lions and tigers will bow. Do they also have to dress him up in all white? 
and call him the governor instead of the colonel. Welcome to my animal farm. Long live the animal farm. The animals revolt in that one. I hate to spoiler alert. The key. Yasujiro. <laughs> oh God, this took a turn. Where's this perfectly placed machine gun off to the side? Oh, bye. See you later. Oh my god, the body count in this movie has just got to be ex like, I don't even know. Hundreds at this point. She's missing the one person. There we go. Oh no, they got her. Oh god. Somebody shouldn't leave their machine gun out, you know? It's like, let me slide into third base and then I'll take these guys out real quick. <laughs> Karate Chapez! Oh! It's like, if only I had both arms. Get out of the I'm not gonna die. You were shot twice in the chest, so it's very likely. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that works. Oh, bonked him. Oh, with a metal hand. Oh, it's not as flexible, obviously. <laughs> oh, God, he's gonna pull it. Yeah. Oh, he pulled the sword out of there. Okay, that works. And he takes out five guys with one. Oh, my. That would be so badass if he wasn't wearing that silly football helmet. You're not a prisoner. I'm not a prisoner! Yes. They've said prisoner and ghost land, but never in the same sentence. And all I want to say is my line of, hey, that's the name of the movie. Oh my. Uh, what's. Oh! Club Cham? I don't know. No. Yeah! <laughs> She's like, I forgot. I'm actually a secretly trained martial artist. Oh, see you later. Oh, God. Yeah, I was just going to be like, there hasn't been that much gore. And blah, 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 blah. there we go. Oh, bonked him. Oh, oh, bonked him again. Oh, right in the bits. Oh, right in this one bit. That's not fair. That's so rude. He's already playing with half the deck. Come on, man. Fuck. Yeah, that's a fair response. That's yeah. Take a time out, man. That's so rude. Son of a nutcracker. He's like J K L O L. You thought I put my sword away. And he takes them out with one swipe. That's a bit anticlimactic. Oh, yeah, there we go. That'll happen. Blech. He still has to get this suit off at some point. It's grandpa. It's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. That's a lie. It's grandpa. It's grandpa. I thought she'd been like shot twice. Freeze! Oh, bye, Governor. Okay, so yeah, they're free now. The Governor was the one keeping them there, I'm guessing. Are they free to be ghosts? Like, officially ghosts and, like, die? Are they free to be humans again? I don't really know. This ghost land is supposed to be like a purgatory. We don't have to pause time anymore. Yeah, we can let go. I'm not sure what there was to gain from keeping all these people prisoner here other than just being horrible to them. Bye, clock tower. Are they at like a bus stop? What? Oh. 
Cuddle puddle. <laughs> Yeah, and this like prophecy about blue butterflies that will bring you death or something. So that was my first time watching the 2011 Nicolas Cage film Prisoners of the Ghostland. I don't know how I feel about it. I wanted to like it. I knew it was one of his newer films. I've really liked Mandy, Color Out of Space, like some of his more recent films I thought have been great and I was hoping this would be along those lines, but this just felt like all style and no substance. Like I have no idea what Nicolas Cage's character is even named. They called him Hero, but I don't know if that was like just a nickname they had for him. We know nothing about his backstory. We have no idea why he was robbing that bank. No idea what his motivation you know behind the bank robbery if this was a one-time thing if he did this all the time why he's in this country it's just so bizarre no character development just he wakes up in jail one day basically they put the suit on him and say go and find my granddaughter which to start sounded like okay like a pretty straightforward plot he's gonna go find his granddaughter and bring her back um but then it's just there was so much going on and so many unnecessary pieces and so many it almost felt like distractions because they just had these huge elaborate sets and hundreds and hundreds of extras that were all in very like elaborate costumes and you're like is there meaning behind these masks like what pieces should I be focusing on what's important to the story what's just there for the sake of being weird basically that's what this felt like it felt like they wanted to make a really weird artsy film and weren't really focused on telling the story they were more focused on background elements like sets and extras and having different masks and makeup and costumes like that definitely seemed to be where the focus of this story was and not on the actual storytelling. There was quite a few production companies involved which is definitely something I've seen before with indie films or lower budget films because they need to get more sources of money but I feel like all of that money just went into I don't know if these sets were all created where they would have found these things but crazy elaborate sets and costumes for all those extras and makeup for all those extras and paying all these extras Extras. like even if they're only on set for one day like that's a huge cost and it felt like every scene had 30 or 40 people in it if not more which was kind of hard to watch because there's so many things happening and so many things that want your attention there was maybe a handful of scenes when it was just Nicolas Cage's character and Bernice but even when they're, you know, walking around, there's people in the background and there's all these things going on and that wall of like singing heads. The lyrics to those songs were like a bird in a cage and like they did reference prisoners quite a bit. And my best guess is that the governor was somehow keeping all these people in Ghostland prisoners, whether the people in Ghostland are actual ghosts. They mentioned that when they're explaining, you know, with their photos and telling the story through the dance that there was this explosion, which again, felt like seven ideas put into one They're like what if we not only had a prison transport truck and Nicolas Cage's partner from the robbery is on that transport truck but that truck crashes into this nuclear power plant but underneath that nuclear power plant is toxic waste and it's just like pick one thing. You don't have to have 50 different convoluted storylines and all these extras to have a successful story. Usually that works against you. So it just felt like they were trying so hard to make this thing really interesting. I don't know if they thought it would be something people would talk about and try and find meaning behind or if people were just supposed to be confused. Like I don't know what the director's intent was with this film. If the director just wanted to do whatever they wanted to and didn't really care about the results. If they they had a vision and then translating that vision just didn't match like it just felt so bizarre and not in a good way like I said I love weird movies but this just felt messy to me and instead of streamlining it and putting you know certain pieces in place they just put you know whatever sticks to the wall that's what they're going with it was just didn't work for me I really wanted to like this so I feel like Nick Cage's character had maybe 20 pages of dialogue. There was a few monologues which were weird. Other than that, he basically asked one question every 20 minutes, basically. And that didn't really even seem to 
fuel the story anywhere. It's so someone else explaining it, like background characters walking around, like that guy in the black hat who's like, oh, actually you can't do this because of this. And oh, actually you can't do this because of this. Like he was there explaining to the audience what all these, you know, hundred different rules of ghost land were there for. And I think my favorite was that scene where Nicolas Cage is up on the stairs in front of the clock and he gives his speech and it's just so ridiculous. I don't know how much of it was scripted. I don't know how much of it he improvised but I think that was my favorite just because he was like listen up everybody this is what we're doing and it was just you think the entire time those people have been prisoners there somebody else would have said like hey we should try and leave again I don't know if they're actually ghosts or if they can physically leave or if the sense of being free was now they're sent off to whatever their next life is. Even when Nick Cage sees his friend get off this prison transport truck, he's like excited to see him. It's like, why would you be happy to see him? This person just shot up how many people at the bank robbery and killed Bernice's mom and shot Bernice in this like gunfight when they were being arrested. And also you've been sitting in jail and you didn't know he was dead, but now you're finding out that he's dead in this explosion and they're like reminiscing about the good old days and we never even find out like how they met or what this other character's backstory is. We know when the camera starts rolling, that's when their story begins. When the camera stops rolling, that's when their story ends. Like, I have no idea what Nick Cage's character and these two women are gonna do now. Like, what is their plan? I don't know if there is source material or anything like that. Comment below and let me know. That might help explain some of the gaps. And I'm guessing there isn't remakes considering this just came out last year. It's very new, but I don't know if they were trying to set it up for a sequel or anything like that. that that suit, that leather onesie basically that Cage was wearing for the entire movie pretty much prevented his Cage rage until we get to the end of the movie because he can't do anything before this thing starts attacking him from the inside, which we saw he lost. Uh, his arm was exploded and his testicle was exploded. And I feel like either one of those injuries would have been more life-threatening. He continues on and that girl, Susie, I believe her name was at the end, who gets shot twice in the chest and she's still like, oh, I'm not dead. So either she did die and now Cage can somehow talk to ghosts or something. Like he said, the ghosts were there to help him. So maybe she did pass on. I have no idea. But um, when Cage Cage built himself that metal arm and then he has the sword coming out of it. That was really cool. I love that they gave his character that ability, but then they just put that stupid old like half broken football helmet on him and he just lost any like badass abilities that his character could have had for a guy who has a sword for a hand and is, you know, taking out people with one swipe somehow. There was definitely some scenes that felt anticlimactic as we we're building to this tension towards the governor. We know he's a creep. He's the worst. You know, we're trying to take him out and we get to the end and Nick Cage is facing off against his like right hand man this assassin guy and you know he stabs him once and then he's done and even when Bernice shoots the governor we find out the governor or imprisoned, kidnapped, whatever you want to call it, um, when Bernice's mom was shot during that robbery. And then he takes Bernice and calls her a granddaughter. But even the like final showdown between the two of them, he's just standing there. He doesn't have a weapon. There's no like back and forth. She just shoots him a bunch of times and then he dies and she says something about peaches. The governor referenced Animal Farm. So I don't know if that's what he was trying to, this story is trying to portray is people fighting back against people who were pressed them. Uh, if you haven't read Animal Farm, it's a George Orwell novel, um, which is amazing. But yeah, I don't know if that's what they were going for. This movie felt like a mix of Mad Max meets Mandy meets Willy's Wonderland meets the Warriors, even with all these like different tribes at Ghostland and people dressing up with different like mannequin pieces on their face. And I, she lost her voice and then instantly gets it back at some point when she's trying to scream and then can talk normally, which I'm glad she did because this was definitely not a dialogue heavy movie. There was not a lot of talking going on or the scenes where people were talking. It was usually shouting the same word over and over and over and over. And I feel like um, a lot of the people cast in this English might not have been their first language. So maybe that was just easier for the director or easier for the story for them just to have less lines to memorize. Like that girl at the end, Susie, she just kept saying, Bernice, 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 Bernice. And then am I dead yet? Am I dead yet? Like she just kept repeating those one lines. I don't know why the governor was keeping them trapped in ghosts land what he benefits from that other than being the worst why those people couldn't leave um, and then basically Nick Cage's plan is like oh why don't we just fix up these old cars you have lying around because there's hundreds of cars here and then we'll just drive out and it's like 
what? Like it took Nick Cage showing up, took a stranger showing up to point out that there's cars here. And even when they explained this like nuclear transport prison crash toxic waste situation that didn't seem to affect everybody. Like that seemed to only be that group of like 12 or 15 people who were on the transport bus and then they came out in their like zombie prison uniforms with their faces burnt. But then everybody else who's living there they just all got lost, I'm guessing, because that's what happened to Bernice with her and her friends. They were out driving and ended up in Ghostland. But even for them to leave, there was no like barrier. There was no like force field or, you know, dimension portal, whatever that they had to get to to get out. They literally just like walked out and then got in a car and drove and back onto the road. I don't, I'm guessing they were assuming that once they got back into town and we only saw that one other city that the governor would then send them back or put them in prison. I don't know why they didn't try and go somewhere else. One of those first scenes when we have Nick Cage's character taken out of the prison and he is being introduced to the governor, there's a crowd around him just chanting governor for some reason. And then there's people doing a live sketch of him. It just... I don't know what any of that had to do with anything other than us seeing Nick Cage and the governor interact and basically setting up the storyline of like, okay, um, you're going, you got five days, the suit's going to explode, go get my granddaughter. Cool. That was like the meat of the scene. That's what we needed to know to set up for the rest of the movie. And every other piece was just unnecessary in my opinion. And I was kind of waiting for it to make sense later. Like, why was everybody chanting? Why were they having a sketch done of him while he's changing into his suit? I really like Nicolas Cage's performance despite this movie being all over the place. This movie kind of felt like one run-on sentence. Like it was like, oh, we'll have them in a nuclear plant and toxic waste and prisoners and mannequins and Mad Max and zombies. And she gets a bracelet of hope at one point and this evil governor and a suit that explodes on a timeline line and people chanting for no reason and people trying to stop time with this giant clock and people losing the ability to speak and some people wearing all white and some people wearing masks for the entire movie maybe this is a movie that gets better with a second viewing i i don't know i don't know that i would watch this again probably not right away uh, some parts definitely felt boring but i was also trying to figure out what was happening so it's just kind of having a lot of questions along the way and trying to figure out what was supposed to be important to the story and what was just background noise overall there was definitely some good cage one liners i liked when he had a sword for his hand that suit that he wore for the entire movie was just ridiculous my favorite nick cage movies are when he gets to go off the rails and be a little bit unscripted so uh, i hope he got to do some of this in this movie because this movie just seems banana sandwich to the extreme like just so much of it didn't make sense and I'm not sure if it's supposed to but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me if you have any other suggestions for Nicolas Cage movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content they gave her like a bracelet of hope and they just have a live sketch artist yeah it's like goth mad max mannequins have come to life after this like nuclear test they're admiring this like library set forced labor camp of them trying to move this clock better hurry up for grandpa or my suit's gonna explode the football helmet's gonna protect you from the guy who chops off heads